appreciate as to the fact that um, before a lot of great things are done, we, we think of ideas, we think of um, having a vision, um, and um, this is really striking. So for, uh, the first question that I will ask is, um, what is Pan-Africanism and what did it mean to your fathers? So, um, we see um, ladies first. Okay, by all means, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, and just before I start, I want to say how impressed I am with Afri Exim Bank that they would include a session on Pan Africanism um, in a gathering, really, that's more concerned with finance, investment, and entrepreneurship. And I think this is something they have to be commended for, because in whatever we do, we have to be guided by a set of principles and ideas. And I think in this case, in this uh, forum, if we have African entrepreneurs who are seriously Pan-Africanists, if we have African bankers, if we have African financiers who are serious Pan-Africanists, we will go a long way in solving many of our economic problems. So, our father used to say the problem might be political, it might be economic, but the solution is political. And I consider that thinking, ideology, ideas, has a lot to do with politics, with how we think. Um, so, we were talking about what is Pan-Africanism. Um, I know it's, to some people it's an ideology, a movement, and if I recollect our father's definition of it in one of his books, he defined it as an objective to be reached, a project which we must work towards. And that's the total liberation and unification of Africa. And as you very well quoted, to serious Pan-Africanists, Africa is the whole continent, the Caribbean, and everywhere where they are Africans. North, South America, Asia, Australia, wherever they are Africans, wherever the African um, 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 families, as your father said, Africans abroad, they are Africans and they belong to the African nation. So we consider Africans as one. And our father lived this experience. He actually took a very unusual decision to marry a woman from North Africa at a time when the North and the rest of the continent were not very familiar with each other. Mm. So that Pan-African marriage, if you will, was a product of a mindset to bring our countries closer. Mm. And indeed, yes, I can see my Egyptian brothers and sisters here cheering. And indeed, North Africa went to help many liberation movements um, after our independence, uh, just as we also supported Algeria in the liberation movement, and Algeria in turn went to support many, many li liberation movements in southern Africa. So that was the spirit, this was the climate, that we had to move together to gain our independence to defeat colonialism, we had to work together. And I wish that same spirit will be strengthened in our minds and hearts today. If we want to create wealth for our people, we have to work and plan together, the whole global family. Mm -hmm. If we want to um, advance, build our industries, if we want to become self-reliant, we have to work together. It will not happen unless 
we come together in every sense of the word, not only economically, but we have to have a common political basis, a shared political vision that will guide all other kinds of integration. And I think when our father was talking about Africa being born in me, I think he might have been talking about a certain mindset, a Pan-African mindset, a certain consciousness. And it is something we have to work towards. It might not be something we are necessarily thinking about unconsciously, but for the sake of our progress, for the sake of our advancement, we need to inculcate and imbibe ourselves with that spirit of Africanness, working together, planning together, and building our industries together. And, and I'm so encouraged by what I'm hearing and listening to today because it means there is hope. We are on the right track because finally, finally, Leaders from different sectors, business, academia, African civil society groups, women's groups, finally a consensus is emerging that we have to unite. Well, very, uh, <laughs> well, this is something you will not find in any textbook. I can assure you that. So thank you very much for your response. Uh, Dr. Gavi. <laughs> Well, um, from my perspective, my father's perspective, um, basically Pan-Africanism per se started in the West um, from those of us who were displaced from the continent. And it, it was a longing to be ourselves and to be integrated back with our homeland. In terms of the longing to be ourselves, everything was taken away from us, even our name. So all we had was a memory of who we were. And in that situation, in the Americas and in the Caribbean, we were brutalized and systemically dehumanized. We always fought against the dehumanization. And we always fought for our freedom. And what freedom meant for us was not simply the breaking of the chains. But as my father said, we must liberate our minds from mental slavery because while others may help us break the chains, none but ourselves can free our mind. So freedom is a mental state and that is what we aspired for, that freedom of our mind that had been incarcerated by a Europe-centric perspective where we were being thought of and treated as less than human. He also said, a people without the knowledge of their past history, traditions and culture is like a tree without roots. That is part of our Pan-Africanism. That's part of our deep memory trying to remember what it was like on the African continent and knowing that we had to relearn what we could not remember. In doing that, we had to get to a place in ourselves that the slave master could not get to. And that was our spiritual self. And that was what could not be broken in the transatlantic slave trade. And that was the essence of our humanity. And that was rebirthed 
in our concept of Pan-Africanism. My father said, God and nature first made us what we are, then out of our own creative genius, we make ourselves what we want to be. Follow always that great law and let God and the sky be our limit and eternity our measurement. We can unpack that. That is a whole cosmology of what it means to be African. It means that we're one with the source, God. It means we're one with nature. And it means that we therefore communicate with God who created us and we communicate with nature. And there's no difference between God, nature, and ourselves as human beings and human species. And that takes us back to our original Nile Valley civilizations. So again, Pan-Africanism is a recapitulation of our history and who we were going back to find our roots. Thank you. That's the essence of our Pan-Africanism. It begins with a mindset. And we will not be able to achieve the things that have been talked about here today without the proper mindset. My father further said that man is the individual who can shape his character, master his will, and create his own destiny. And he said that mind is what creates and mind can create anything that you want in nature.